Hi guys, in today's video we are going to be discussing the biggest issue with Plants vs Zombies Battle for Neighborville in my opinion and why this most recent shooter in the franchise has felt like a step backwards for most players. Now there are a lot of things you could say the other games have done better than BFN in the past, however I really wanted to try and pinpoint the most fundamental issue that's affected the core of the game and why in many ways it has been less successful than its predecessors. As usual, just before we begin, remember to hit those like and subscribe buttons if you enjoy the content on this channel and want to help it grow. Anyway, let's get started. So I've been playing Battle for Neighborville since day one. I played through all of the Founders Edition and have created over 100 videos about tons of different areas of the game. And whilst my time with the game has been thoroughly enjoyable, it has become clear from listening to you guys and my own thoughts that BFN hasn't really been received in the best light, unfortunately. Now, before we go on, I just want to clarify that I'm not someone who simply likes to just hate on a game and pretend that there is not one single thing about a game that is good, because there are positives and negatives about every game, nothing is perfect. So I'm not going to be spending the next 10 minutes or so hating on BFN, so sorry to let you down if that's what you were expecting, but what I am going to try my best to do is be objective. But enough with me waffling, what in my opinion is the number one issue with BFN? Well, ultimately, I think it comes down to something quite simple, and that is the developers losing sight of what really makes an amazing Plants vs. Zombies game. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm sure there are many people on the dev team who know a hell of a lot more about the fan base and the game itself than me, but from my perspective, I felt like there was never a meeting or discussion around Battle for Neighborville where the team sat down, looked back at the previous games, and pinpointed exactly what worked and what didn't. There are so many things they got right in other games that seem simply have seemed to be missing from BFN. These aren't just things that are present in the Garden Warfare games, but other areas of the franchise too. One of these things can be seen through the missing character variants and what they bring to the table. Not just that they are awesome characters, but it's related to something that has been present in every Plants vs Zombies game up until now, and that is a huge variety of characters that allow for so much choice it makes for almost unlimited amounts of different strategies, loadouts, builds, and replayability. A great example of this can be seen in Plants vs Zombies 2. At the time of recording, PvZ2 has 142 plants. Let's not forget that PvZ2 is a 2D game and probably much simpler to create a new character, but at the same at the same time, Garden Warfare 2 has around 105 characters, if not more. With such a vast number of characters, it meant the amount of strategies, tactics, and team setups were and are pretty much endless. And I always found it interesting hearing what different strategies my friends were testing out or thought were the best. It seemed like there was so much variety that everyone had their own unique loadout or favorite variant. However, Battle for Neighborville has seemingly almost forgotten this core element. Yes, this type of choice can be seen in BFN through the new characters and perk systems, but in comparison to the other games, this has been reduced and dumbed down considerably. One thing that tried to redeem the game, which unfortunately hasn't come close to being as good as the character variants, are the legendary upgrades. When these began being added to the game, you could almost feel the developers trying to backtrack, realizing the variants were a key part of replayability the fanbase longs for. The second specific thing I wanted to mention is about the attention to detail and huge amounts of crazy creativity that again have seemed to have been greyed out or toned down in BFN. Previous titles have created levels and maps that really allow your imagination to run wild. They take you completely out of the real world and create these amazing sites and environments you could only imagine existing in the Plants vs Zombies universe. Out of all the shooters, I think Garden Warfare 2 has the most interesting and best level design. I always comment on something new whenever I play the game. The developers put so much detail and pack so much insane and awesome stuff in it, it really just enhanced the already amazing experience into something really special. The locations you are able to visit are just stunning, like Time Park that takes you through so many time periods and different types of design, it's ridiculous. It's not even just the overall look and feel, there are so many other smaller details that players would probably never even see or take notice of, but PopCat bothered to put them in anyway. You really got a sense the developers loved this game and wanted to make it the best it could possibly be. The maps really captured the over the top and wacky tone, comedy and visuals that drew many of the fans to the franchise in the first place. I feel they certainly went with a quality over quantity approach with the Garden Warfare 2's world design. On the other hand, Battle for Neighborville's map and world feel almost too normal and samey in comparison. Pressure Pier is a great example of this, it's just a beachfront. Yes, we have the cool statues, but it feels like something you could see in real life. 
The maps aren't nearly over the top or crazy enough in my opinion from what we've seen before. I think Plants vs Zombies is all about creating environments that can't be seen in the real world, taking what we see as normal and flipping it on its head or exaggerating it so much it becomes bizarre beyond recognition. Now I could talk much longer about specific core elements BFN seem to have forgotten about or have become watered down, but I think you get the idea. However, I would like to talk about the fine line between innovation and replication when it comes to video games, and this is a concept that quite a number of other games companies are seemingly starting to forget about. Bethesda Game Studios and the Fallout universe is another unfortunate example where this has become apparent. When it comes to innovation and replication, and this is a concept that can be applied to almost any product or service by the way, if you change too much of your product too quickly, it can have a negative effect on your existing fan and customer base, the people who got you to where you are. But on the flip side, if a game franchise stays too similar and doesn't evolve, it can become boring and stale. You've got to try and keep enough of your newer game the same so it feels like the older ones, but also add in new things that innovate and keep things interesting. The major issue with BFF I think is that some of the elements they decided to change or innovate on were actually parts of the game that should have been replicated such as the character variants for example. But at the same time it's great PopCap wanted to try a different take on the spectacular formula they had created and like they say you live and learn. Sadly, overall I feel that only a huge turnaround from PopCap's approach to Battle for Neighborville would be able to make it live up to the expectation and put it on the pedestal Garden Warfare 2 and previous games have been put upon. I don't think any balance update, legendary upgrade or amount of free rainbow stars is going to fix the fundamental issue BFN has. We can only hope that the errors made in this particular case can be learned from and ultimately improved on for whatever is next for the franchise. Anyway guys, that's about it for today's video. I hope you enjoy let me know your opinions on this in the comments below but other than that remember to subscribe and i shall see you in the next one okay thanks guys bye